Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. We're down the Jersey Shore today checking out some amazing images at the Danny Clinch Transparent Gallery with renowned photographer Danny Clinch. A native of Toms River, New Jersey, Danny has been taking pictures for decades and has photographed some of the biggest names in music, sports, and entertainment. His portfolio is as massive as it is artful, and you'll be surprised at how many names and images you'll recognize. He previously released his work in a series of art books, but nowadays he's taking a chance to show off his work in a different way. Danny Clinch Transparent Gallery is a beautiful space full of interesting furniture and amazing photos. It's designed to be a place for people in the Asbury Park community to come together not only to enjoy the art, but hang out, drink coffee, listen to live music, and create. The gallery is fully realized now, but the long road of how it all came to be starts with a young man from Tom's River and his camera. I guess I've always had a love of music, a love of photography and art, and I felt like, um, you know, when my folks and everyone were asking, well, what do you want to do with yourself, you know, and I always had a camera in my hand, I was always sneaking it into concerts and getting up close and shooting photos, so I said, well, you know, I'll try photography, I'll see how that goes. And uh, I went to Ocean County College for a couple of years for visual communications there, and I ended up really loving photography and going for it. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, what are some of the earlier concerts that you photographed? Uh, I, you know, I feel like one of, one of the first concerts I photographed was like Charlie Daniels' band at Six Flags Great Adventure because I'm from Tom's River. Mm -hmm. And so um, I snuck in for that. Um, and, uh, and I remember early Bob Seger, uh, Springsteen, um, uh, Van Halen. Or, you know. so these are times you were allowed to bring your camera in? No, or no, you're, you're no, just no, no. Your camera. In fact, I would have my cameras and I'd go with all my friends. And they, they understood that A, they were gonna help me sneak part of my camera in, like here's a lens, here's some film, here's whatever. And then I'd take the camera body and like stuff it down my pants and we'd all go in. And then they also knew that I would pretty much disappear for most of the show because mm -hmm. I was trying to sneak down into the front right. to take some photos. So you went to art school after OCC, is that what you did? Uh, I went to New England School of Photography in Boston. So I did two years at OCC and then two years at uh, New England School of Photography. And I found a workshop that had one of my heroes there, which was Annie Leibovitz. And uh, really just loving the workshop that she had given. And make a long story short, I was invited to be an intern at her studio in New York City. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, um, you know, I think workshops are really important for a growing artist, you know, you around like-minded people. Uh, and maybe some magic will happen, and I happen to get the opportunity to work for her. Right, and who are some of the artists you've met at that point? Um, uh, musicians? Yeah, or, musicians, um, yeah. Oh, I mean, up, up to that point, it was just, you know, scrappy, running around. Uh, um, you know, at that point, I hadn't even really begun my career, so. Okay, so we're talking um, late 80s, early 90s? Uh, 80, um, I worked with Annie, I think, in 87, 88. Okay, so you were part of the Tunnel of Love photo shoot, is that correct? Yeah. What was that like for you? And then, uh, well, it was really exciting. And I was talking to Bruce about this the other day. I saw his show on Broadway, and uh, we somehow came around to this conversation of like, you know, Annie, and that I had worked for her and stuff. And and I reminded him that, um, you know, I was I was working. I'd worked my way up to being one of her assistants, and they got the um, Tunnel of Love record was going to be photographed, you know, by Annie, and we were all pretty excited about it. All the guys who worked there, and in fact, we got the cassette of Tunnel of Love before anyone else. We got the pre thing because she was going to shoot it. So she was playing it in the studio all the time and we were getting to hear it. And so it really holds a special place in my heart, mm -hmm. that record. Um, and so as we're about to go on the shoot and Annie th is thinking, you know, maybe we shouldn't take Danny. I mean, he's from New Jersey. He might, he might freak out like <laughs> in front of Bruce. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, please take me. And, uh, and they did take me. And I ended up going along for the shoot. And long story short, in one of the situations that they were photographing, we were actually in Sandy Hook. And Bruce had a really sort of like a cowboy boots, a bolo tie, like, you know, the, what's on the cover of the record. And um, they didn't have 
a belt that felt like it belonged. Like they didn't have like a cowboy style belt. Mm -hmm. Well, I happened to be wearing one. And so they looked at me and they're like, how about that belt? Can we use your belt? I was like, sure. You know what? I like take my belt off. I'm holding my pants up. And son of a gun, if my belt isn't on the cover right, right. of Tunnel of Love. And I also reminded Bruce that he tried to drive away with my belt. And I had to say like, hey, guy, I need my belt. My pants are falling down. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so working with Annie was a big advantage for me. It opened a lot of doors with other photographers. So I worked for Annie. I worked for a wonderful fashion photographer named Stephen Mizell. Um, I worked with um, Timothy White, who's also from New Jersey, a uh, great photographer um, and a mentor to me. He was always very kind to me. And I took all these things that I learned from these photographers and just applied them to my personality. Of course, I, I want to be Annie Leibovitz, and then I realize I will never be Annie Leibovitz. I'll be Danny Clinch, and I'll try and make it work for myself. Um, but taking a little bit from each one and just uh, applying it to the things that I like. You know, we have to take a break now. We come back, I want to talk about what happens next yeah. in your career. We'll do that when we come back. Sounds good. Thank you so much for joining us. Danny Clinch is our guest. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. We're at the Danny Clinch Transparent Gallery in Asbury Park today, talking with Danny Clinch about how he started in the business and how it led him to create this great art space and his amazing pictures, like this one here of the boss himself. Uh, you know, after working with a bunch of photographers uh, over the years, I decided to strike out on my own. And I started to um, look to the friendships that I had with some people. And there was a, a good friend of mine, Elizabeth, who was working at Spin Magazine. And I wanted to do some music uh, photography. And I was hitting her up, hoping that maybe I would get some opportunities there. And she gave me one of my first assignments, photographing a band called Third Base, which is a hip-hop group for Spin Magazine. And then I took those photographs to Def Jam Records, who was doing a lot of the early hip-hop photography. This was early 90s. And um, at the end of the day, I showed them my photographs, and they really liked them, uh, the ones I had taken of third base. And um, they started to give me some assignments. And they were giving assignments to the younger photographers because hip-hop at the time wasn't as commercially successful. They maybe thought it was going to be a fad and that uh, the the bigger photographers weren't taking the gig, so they were falling on people like me. So after having photographed third base, MC Search, who is one of the artists in that band, was also managing some artists. And he was managing Nas, who at the time was just about to put out his first record called Illmatic. And it's a legendary hip hop album. And I was able to t shoot the photographs for that. And it's just sort of snowballs. You know, you know one person and then you do a good job with them and they pass you on to someone else and you just start to get a reputation. Uh, and I did a lot of early hip hop records. I did the Nas Illmatic. I did Pete Rock and CL Smooth. I did the first Kanye West record later on called College Dropout. And so having photographed those artists, um, a lot of the, the indie rock bands, Jane's Addiction, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, bands like that, they loved hip hop. They loved the fact that I had photographed Public Enemy. And so then I started getting gigs with them. And uh, the beauty of all this is that I was able to stay in music, photographing musicians, but I photographed Tupac Shakur to Willie Nelson and everyone in between, Bruce Springsteen and Neil Young, Foo Fighters, Pearl Jam, Fish. And like, it's really been a blessing that I've been able to work in music but be so diversified in it. There were several things that lined up for me. I had photographed Tupac Shakur for Rolling Stone magazine. And three years later, he passed away. And they used my photograph on the cover of Rolling Stone. That was a big get for me. I also, shortly after that, I published a book of my photographs called Discovery In. And I took that book and sent one to Bruce Springsteen and uh, hoped that I would get a job photographing him. And at the same time, I had done a job with um, uh, John Mellencamp, and his publicist was also Bob Dylan's publicist. And John and I worked really well together, and Larry, Bob Dylan's publicist, said, um, hey, I, I like your style, I think it's relaxed, I, I work with Bob Dylan, and I think he would like your style too. And I was like, well, okay, great, yeah, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to work with Bob Dylan. And um, strangely enough, on March 16th of 1999, I got a call in the morning from Jeff Rosen who manages Bob Dylan, saying that Larry Jenkins says you're the guy to shoot Bob Dylan. And I was like, all right, well, let's all listen to Larry and I'd love to photograph Bob Dylan. 
So I couldn't believe it. I was freaking out. We're like, oh my gosh, I didn't you know, hear from Springsteen, but I got this you know, Bob Dylan shoot. And later on that afternoon, I get a call from uh, Sandy Chiron, who was designing all of Bruce Springsteen's album packaging and tour books and stuff at that point, saying that, hey, we got the book. I showed it to Bruce. And Bruce is wondering if you want to come down to New Jersey and photograph the E Street Band because he's just getting them back together again after all this time. And I was like, let me check my calendar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a national holiday at my studio, uh -huh. March 16th. So you, you have two opportunities, but obviously the, the E Street Band shoot was probably the bigger of the two, although huge. Yeah. What was that shoot like for you? So imagine, here I am, a guy from New Jersey. Uh, I had met Bruce once before ever so briefly with Annie. And um, I mean, it was really uh, emotional for me. I grew up with that music. I cared so much about it. And uh, you know, here I am at Fort Monmouth with the E Street Band. And uh, it was kind of crazy because like they were rehearsing. So it was, I love the document. I'm a big fan of just documenting what's going on. So that was really fun. Like I was pulling each band member aside and doing a portrait of them. Nels and I, no problem, having a great time. Clarence, the, you know, the most photogenic guy in the world. And of course, Bruce was the last one. But Bruce was so easy and so relaxed and he loves photography and he's like interested in the process. And he's Bruce Springsteen. He looks great and like, uh, I just, I just went with my instincts. At that point, you have to forget everything else and just go with your instincts, because if you overthink it, you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I started working with Bruce and shortly thereafter, he wrote The Rising. So I, I did the photographs for The Rising, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Like, he, he didn't mind having me around, and I like, to, I like to be invisible sometimes, and then, you know, when I need to step up and direct and, you know, take charge of something, you know, I do that. And I, I think it's all about feel, and. Um, you know, we just have a really nice rapport. And so after Rising, I made a short film for the Devils and Dust record. And I've done a part of every record moving forward. Seeger Sessions, High Hopes, Wrecking Ball, you know, it's been really exciting. And I think it just comes down to trust and being comfortable. And, and I think that, you know, I've done so many tours with him where I think, you know, Few people really get that access, and I just I try not to get in his way. I, I I think it's about respect for the people who work around him as well. His tour managers, road managers, managers, guitar techs, the people on the road they have a job to do. Um, but I think if you have a relationship with someone like that, I think they they understand uh, the importance of the document. Mm -hmm. And if they're going to have someone back there, I hope it's going to be me. <laughs> and you just did the cover of Variety too. That he yeah. appeared. Did you do that? Okay. Yeah. Variety. I did the cover of Variety. I also did the New York Magazine cover with him and with, Patty. Uh, with he, yeah, with I saw and that, and uh, that was cool. I tell you, and I haven't really told this story, but we did the photo shoot on the stage on oh, Broadway. Oh, that was it was on that stage. So okay, like we went it. to the stage, we sat there, we set it up, they walked in, and we you know played a little music and shot some photos, and it was it was uh, uh, fast and easy, you know. Um, and again, because I know them so well, it was, there was no getting to know each other, you know. Uh, Patty is just fantastic. Uh, she's such a great personality and so accommodating, and, uh, and she was excited about it. We were all excited about it, so. And you also did some Rolling Stone photos with Bruce recently? Or? Yeah, I did the cover of Rolling Stone for Bruce when he got off the big tour, like that last tour where he did like, I don't know, 75 <laughs> countries or something. Right, right. Um, so that was, that, that was really cool. That's always a you lot You know, of fun. we have to take a break now. I want to talk about what you're doing in Asbury Park. We'll do that when we come back. Danny Clinch is our guest. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. We're talking rock and roll photography with Danny Clinch, who has taken the photographs for six of the last seven Bruce Springsteen studio albums. He'll tell us a little more about the gallery and what's coming up for him in the future. So Danny, you decided to have a gallery here in Asbury Park. What made you come here to show your work and what are you doing here? Well, it was kind of serendipity. I ran into a friend of mine and she um, was familiar with what they were doing here in, uh, in Asbury and at the Asbury Hotel. And we talked about doing a, a gallery show here and said, we've got a space and maybe we could do a pop-up. And I think what the Asbury Hotel and iStar are doing here is they're really encouraging the people of Asbury to be a part of what they're building as well. And so it's been really exciting to have them support this for me. I could never do this on my own, you know? And uh, we created this space. We brought in, you know, my friend Tina Karekis, who lives here in Asbury or lives in Bradley Beach, has been part of Asbury and the growth uh, for a long time uh, and um, we just created this space here and, and it's been 
it's been really exciting. It's, be, it's kind of become like a little community hangout. And you know, from the people in Asbury who are my friends, the young musicians who come through here all the time, who have become my friends, uh, it's like a community hang. And you can come down here even in the middle of the winter on a weekend, four o'clock uh, till eight o'clock. We have some live music in here, and we end up being packed. There's 50 people in here hanging out. They bring their coffee, whatever, some water. They bring their dogs, uh, their friends and family. And our friend Rachel Ann Adopkin, who's a lo local musician as well, curates. She knows all the young great bands here. There's a great scene in Asbury Park for music right now. You know, Rachel, uh, Mercury Brothers, The Burn, uh, Cranston Dean, Joe Michelini, American Trappist. It's exciting. So when I look around, I see a variety of items here. What made you want to put certain items up? We started with the photographs. We started thinking about people in New Jersey, people who have a connection to Asbury Park. You know, Patti Smith, of course, uh, Bruce Springsteen, Brian Fallon, Gaslight Anthem. Dylan has come through many times. And so we were thinking about that. And then we thought about, well, we want to have some live music in here. Like we're going to set up and have a back line. We're going to have a drum kit. We're going to have a bass. We're going to have a guitar. If you want to roll in here with your friends and play some music, like go ahead. <laughs> you know, it's been really fun. And so therefore, this setup right here um, is about people making music. So this wall is all about folks that are making music. They're in the recording studio. Uh, they might be on stage. They might be rehearsing, that sort of stuff. So that's what we did here. And then we mixed in, like we wanted it to be comfortable. So Tina, who uh, her and um, her boyfriend Lamar, they do um, mid-century modern furniture. And she was doing that on the boardwalk. And serendipitously, her lease came up when we were starting this space. And I was like, we got to put your gear in here. This will make it so much more comfortable and such a great hang. And, and we're like, who's going to run this space? And she's like, I'll run it. And we were like, OK, this is great. With all that, you know, these are the decisions we were making. Throwing up the big imagery on the windows uh, with the vinyl. We teamed up with Barron & Barron, which is a creative agency in New York City. And we all just kind of, you know, brainstormed about, like, what could we do? Putting these set lists on the floor, uh, covering the bathrooms in contact sheet wallpaper. Uh, it's just been really fun. I'm grateful to the Asbury Hotel for, for having us here. And, and subsequently, we've been extended and extended and extended from a three-month pop-up to a year to who knows what. You know? Now, rumor has it your band plays here, too. You play the yeah. harmonica? I play harmonica in the Tangiers Blues Band. Uh, we play in New York a lot. We play here. Uh, we've played at Light of Day several times. And then with all these new friends I have, I end up sitting in with these bands all the time. And it's been really fun. I've been lucky enough to sit in with the, you know, the younger bands here in Asbury Park, play harmonica. We've started our own little high anxiety blues band here out of the gallery. Uh, and I've ended up at, on the stage at the Paramount with Joe Krasicki and the, and, the, and the House Rockers and Bruce. Like, I've actually played <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> and I remember Bruce was like, yeah, that. come on. You know? <laughs> and uh, Joe Krasicki invited me up. And I remember the two of them, that we had we had decided on a song we were going to do. I had the key harmonica I needed. I knew the song mm -hmm. that I was going to play. I had found my little spots. And then they changed it on me. They're like, we're doing Pink Cadillac in G. And I was like, OK. <laughs> I ran off. I got my C harmonica. And then I went up there, and Bruce looked at me and Joe. And they were just like, the two of these guys are looking at me, <laughs> going like this, OK, Danny, come on, here we go. <laughs> That's great. No, but I, um, I've been playing for like 20 years. And you know, when I was assisting other photographers, when I worked with Timothy White, me and his assistant, we were like so into, he was turning me on to like the blues. I had my, may have heard of Muddy Waters, but I loved the Allman Brothers. I loved Bruce. I loved all these blues-based kind of rock and roll bands. Right. And we would sit while we were waiting for some celebrity somewhere in a van and just, he would play blues, I would play my harmonica, he would bang on the, the dashboard. Yeah. So it started, and, and the funny thing is, is like for it to turn into this, to where like I play in my own blues band with my friends, and I sit in with everyone from, you know, Bruce to the Foo Fighters and the Pearl Jam and stuff, it's, it's crazy. Good stuff. Yeah. What's next for you now? You must be thinking of this future, huh? Well, You're still I very mean, young. You know, uh, oh, well, I mean, immediately I have the Grammys. I do photographs of all the winners yeah. at the Grammys every year. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I, I'm excited to keep this going. Um, I have something else up my sleeve that I can't share yet. Okay. Uh, we have the Asbury Park Music and Film Festival, which you're also in, gives back to the community. You're on the board of that? You're I am on the board. board of that, yeah. uh, and I want to mention also that what's really important to me here is, like, we give back a lot to the community. We have a lot of uh, community events here. We have young artists come in here all the time. Tina does, like, a sewing class where, like, 
kids is from six to 60, whatever, right. come in and she makes her own, all her own clothes. Um, we've had like um, kids, the KYDS Foundation, which um, teaches positivity to the young uh, children and kids of Asbury Park uh, and the surrounding areas. We've had, um, there's a, um, a mentor, a mother's mentor program in a lot of the high schools around here for young high school women who have become pregnant uh, or they've had children and they keep them in school and give them the education instead of keeping them at home and having them suffer for uh, for that and it's a really positive thing and we've had them come in and I've given uh, uh, you know a presentation to them I talk about the artists that I feel you know would connect with them uh, you know photographing the Grammys and Beyonce and Jay-Z and you know or Taylor Swift and Adele or like things like that where you know you can connect with kids and say hey I'm from Tom's River like this is what I've done and don't give up on your hopes and dreams and you know stay on the right path and we just want to be an inspiration and we want to give back to the community at the same time. Neat. Well Danny thank you so much for being on our show good luck with all that you do here in Asbury Park. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching we'll see you again next time.